Welcome to the Franchise Woman Podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships forged. I'm Rebecca Monet, CEO and Chief Scientist at Zoracle Profiles, along with my co-host, community advocate, speaker, author, and entrepreneur, Tracy Kawa. Tracy, we have a very special guest today, uh, Diana Simmons. Diana Simmons is the co-founder and CEO of Simply Cabinetry, a brand <laughs> she launched with her husband in 2010. Starting from the garage in 20, uh, 2007, they have grown the company to redefine the cabinetry experience in their showroom and design studios through streamlined planning and purchasing a factory direct quality cabinetry. Simply Cabinetry provides simple, premium, and luxu uh, luxury cabinetry to industry professionals like contractors and builders and developers and interior designers, and of course, real estate investors, as well as people like you and me, the mm -hmm. DIY uh, homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, Diana is also a licensed realtor and a certified franchise executive, which of course, all of that information will help her uh, in growing this franchise. Diana, thank you for coming to the show today. Thank you so much for having me, guys. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Welcome. So thank as Rebecca you. says, take us back to where it all began. Like, what do you remember as your earliest influence on you business-wise? Maybe it was your parents when you were younger. Yeah. So, I mean, my parents, obviously, everyone's parents kind of has your influence on how you grow up and what you learn. So my mom and being um, a stay-at-home mom, but also really involved in like interior design spaces, uh, always helping relatives pick out paint and pick out options. Um, and my dad actually, his family owned a machine shop. So working there and being there and learning from them while scrubbing the floors, you know, kind of helped me forge my way into what I do today, partially. <laughs> so that is a great influence. Uh, yeah. it's, it's funny when we have that kind of inspiration from others around us, we naturally want to learn more, right? Yeah. And honestly, just sort of fit in. I want to do what yeah. my does and my <laughs> auntie does. And how are they able to see these beautiful things? How are they yeah. in your in your mind in their minds? So exactly. as you grew up, tell us a little bit of your growing up. I understand yeah. you're also in sports, basketball, I understand. Yep, so yep, yep. Tell us about that and what you learned about that and how all of that then contributed to becoming an entrepreneur. Yeah, so what a lot of people don't know, unless I'm standing next to you, is that I'm six foot three. So growing up being six foot three is not something that's, you know, an exciting to be thing to be as a little girl growing up. So, you know, I had my trials and tribulations through that and with, uh, you know, getting teased and all that, but I kind of eventually found my way into playing sports, which I was uh, captain of the foot basketball team. So I was able to kind of find my spirit in that and my knowledge and like just taking charge and actually being able to, you know, coach people through things and educating and helping them learn something and um, grow you know, which is one of our, you know, core values. And what I kind of live by is having, is trying to help people grow. Nice. I, I would assume that, that that being involved with sports, being on the basketball team, you said you were captain. Mm -hmm. I would assume that that would definitely help you find your confidence. Yeah. Because, you know, high school, a time where people are not so high on the confidence scale. Yeah, so how <laughs> exactly. Did, how did that affect you? Yeah. So, I mean, it obviously helped me a lot be able to find, you know, my role and just no finding myself in reality, because I didn't even know I had the capability of doing that or being that since I was so quiet, you know, being so tall as growing up. So understanding that I, I can build that strength within myself because I am who I am and I can add value to something you know, and, and just getting my voice out there instead of trying to hold back. It's, it's finding that confidence and owning it and being you. Yeah. Yeah. And my guess is God probably put a big voice in you a right. lot with your height, that your voice yeah. is going to be heard by many at yes. some, some point. One of the things you just pointed out a minute ago, and I don't want to skim over it, 
is one of the values of your company is to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, So where did that come from? What is it that makes you compelled to not only continue to learn and grow, but also to help others learn and grow? So I, I don't always want to be the smartest in the room. I want to find smarter people. I always want to learn from them. And in turn, you know, if I have people that don't know as much as me, I want to help educate them as much as possible. Even when it's down to my clients, you know, when I'm showing them about cabinetry, I really want them to learn about what they're doing. Um, And like making sure they're making that educated decision. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, everybody should want to grow because it's, you know, knowing yourself and being able to understand, you know, your, your abilities and you don't know what you're capable of unless you continue to grow. Okay. Okay. I got to go back to our pre-interview because yeah. one of the things that you shared with us is that you're one of your pet peeves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, tell us what your pet peeve is. And yeah. It's really influenced so much. Yeah. So one of my pet peeves is when people tell me I didn't know, or I don't know, because essentially I never want to ever say that to somebody. My goal is always to figure it out. You know, there's always ways of figuring things out, you know, the internet, you know, anywhere. We always have our goal of providing everybody with the, the tools they need to succeed. So you need to know how to find them. You know, it's even with my kids. I'm not, I'm not, you know, a helicopter mom or anything like that. I, they ask me questions. I ask them a question back. I'm not going to answer them. I want them to learn and grow from that, you know? So, you know, don't tell me you didn't know, go figure out why, how all that, you know, because all the information's out there and, you know, that'll help you grow at the end of the day. You know, I just saw the parallel between you stepping into a leadership role as um, a basketball captain, yeah. hoping to bring out the best in everybody on the team mm-hmm. and then being a franchisor, helping to helping others to find their dream and to realize their potential. Can yeah. you speak to that parallel a little bit? Oh, that is like, it, it's very parallel because at the end of the day, um, you know, being a franchisor with these franchisees, you really need to be there, you know, I mean, almost like a cheerleader too, where it's just, you're there cheering them on and you want to help them grow and learn and just, how to go about it in the right way, because, you know, there are things that happen that you kind of need to tiptoe a little bit differently about so you don't hurt their feelings, but you want them to be able to grow. So it's just helping them know how to get better or learn more or have the proper tools or where to find the proper tools in order to be able to do that. So and with that, whether it's basketball and, um, you know, training more and or what have you versus, you know, with cabinetry, it's just learning more, digging into more, doing, you know, tutorials on different things and, you know, just digging and, and, and practicing. And um, yeah, so it's, it's very parallel. Yeah, It's definitely a parallel. And then you add to that this, you know, don't say you don't know, you're also mm-hmm. living that. You're living right. that by, if you don't know something, you'll find out, right? Whether right. You- a class or you ask a mentor or you read a book or you do trial and error but there's this unwillingness to not know and mm-hmm. others do the same they they yeah don't tell me you don't know go look go ask questions go do whatever um yeah. it is the way we grow right we grow yeah. through knowledge and knowledge mm-hmm. is power and so that's what you're doing when you're in whether it's your children, as you described, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Go figure it out. Don't tell me. Right. <laughs> That's right. Funny. Right. I, I remember it's funny as you were saying that I got a picture of my dad and I'm a baby boomer. So I'm the oldest of the batch here. And when we would have a question, he would send us to the encyclopedia Britannica, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so that we learned when we we're doing that. Yeah. Well, our teachers you know, would be they send you to the dictionary if you didn't know how to spell something, which I always thought was stupid. And then, <laughs> or they'd send you to the library to go research it. And it yeah. was in that that we we learn and we grow. And you're doing this exactly. for your beautiful children and for yeah. your franchisees. 
Right. And it, that's just, I, I get a thrill out of letting them learn and figure it out, but not on their own. You know, it's not like I'm just saying, go figure it out. It's just, you know, if the right resource isn't there, let's figure it out together where we need to go to find it. I never like just giving the answer. I want to figure, help you figure out how to find that resource and um, on your own. So. So in line with figuring it all out, <laughs> Can you take us back to the time when you were starting your company out of your garage? Because mm -hmm. I'm getting like the Bill Gates visual with all the computer wires, except it <laughs> <is made>. <laughs> maybe it's yeah. the cabinetry. <laughs> yeah, so right. I just, you know, was it a scary time for you? Like, what, what was going through your mind during that time? Yeah. So obviously starting any business has some like, I guess, intrepidations and like you always get nervous, but it's just having that willing willingness to kind of take that risk and that leap. Um, and, you know, it, it did take us a little bit to do that because we were doing the investment properties. Luckily we had a little bit of money saved once we stopped doing those in the downturn of the market, but it's just, it's having that confidence in what you're doing and knowing that it's something that will work and you start to see that working. It kind of like you're proving yourself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it, it's nothing great starts easy. Right. So it's just, there's, there's things you learn over the years and, you know, things that I've definitely over the first couple of years, you know, you, you take turns and you, you get back on track, but it's those learning times that, you know, help other people then. So then when I've learned from them, they don't have to learn the hard way, like we may have, but now, you know, we have those tools for them to learn successfully and not take as much of a risk as we had taken back in the day. That's awesome. Nothing great starts <laughs> easy. That's like <laughs> book title. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 the picture I get with that um, is the working out and building muscles, you know, mm -hmm. that is difficult, but then we get stronger and that's mentally stronger, emotionally stronger. Right. If it's too easy, we're really not learning or growing. Right. Right. Or anybody will do it. That's right. Anybody could do it at <laughs> that point. Okay. Yeah. I have a curiosity. I'm not married. I don't know if I could work with a husband. <laughs> Maybe someday. I'm not that evolved. I'm not as evolved as you are, Diana. <laughs> How is it working with your husband? So it always has its ups and downs, but I guess just our personalities, you know, we definitely have, um, you know, our, our, our superpowers in, in each other, right? So I, he somehow can bring something out of nothing at this idea and, you know, I'm always the one that kind of transcribes it to people because it might not be a full idea, but transcribing it and making sure that, you know, it is something that we can use and then building those tools to make it useful. Um, you know, so we really are basically, you know, each other's, um, you know, we, we kind of keep each other on the right track. And we definitely wouldn't be where we are today without each other, um, because I'm, you know, the the runner, the cheerleader, the, you know, I want to keep things going and keep them on track. He would probably still be thinking about what we're doing in our garage, you know? So it's just, it's bringing us together. I've kind of made that, that grid good weld of the, what we're doing today. Um, and, you know, and it, it'll be good also because, you know, to, I mean, it's, there is a lot of women in our industry, but to also have that male, you know, there with the contractors, you know, and, and, you know, having that connection as well. So both of us here, because, you know, a franchisee could be a man or a woman, and it's just having that connection when it comes to being either a father or learning or what have you. Um, we're both, mm -hmm. you know, great at learning together. But yes, being together every day, almost 24 seven, you know, it's good and bad, but we we definitely for somehow we turn it off and, you know, having the three boys, you know, going home and just, you know, not bringing work home home. I mean, obviously we work from home sometimes, but, you know, once we're off, we're off and we're just kind of together <laughs> in a marriage. <laughs> I love what you said about, well, to paraphrase that you understand his vision and yeah. then you can relay it to the customer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like you really are a synthesizer of information. So right. Would you say? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Some, somehow, 
I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, I can, I can listen to people and kind of understand where they're coming from. And I think that's a, at the end of the day also helped me with the sales when I was doing sales and cabinetry is really listening to the client. And I always actually, this is another thing that we didn't even really talk about, but I always tell my staff members, never say no, always ask why, because you never know if the client really knows exactly what they're asking because cabinetry is so um, complex. And that can even be something that's in life. You know, you don't, you don't know if they're getting at the right answer. And that's a lot of the things that I ask my husband when he gives me something, it's like, well, why give me the details? You're not giving me all the details. I want to understand what's going on in your head because he's, you know, there's something there. It's just, how do we bring it to life? That's brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful mental filter. Right? Yeah. If, don't say no, just mm -hmm. Give me more information. Tell tell right. me why you're thinking that, or what or what what is directing you that way, and then you right. pull out. So it may not be no; it may be we'll have you considered or mm -hmm. some other kind of thing. It's a, that's a really cool filter. It also makes us better listeners. Yes, when, when you think about it, where we're not just saying you know, on the, the superficial, but we're going deeper into what that person is thinking, what that person is wanting, whether it's a customer right. or a business partner like your husband. Yep, definitely. Really? It puts us on the same yeah. page, right? It puts yeah. everybody on the same page and gives everybody right. a common language. Right, exactly. Because not everybody speaks the same way, you know, and, and what comes to their head and, and they don't necessarily know how to convey it. It's our jobs to kind of dissect that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. Well, let's talk about cabinetry. Yes. <laughs> let's talk about cabinetry. First off, um, trends in cabinetry. Yeah. I, I'm a real estate investor my, myself, and I'm thinking what I looked at three years ago versus today has changed, but there's some things that are consistent. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with trends? What are you seeing um, and when you're dealing with a customer, where do you lead them in that conversation? So when it comes to trends, um, we typically, we work with the biggest manufacturers in the United States that ship all over the United States. So they have a lot of data when it comes to the details of what's up and emerging when it comes to trends. So it's really, and they actually always send out um, surveys to understand, you know, what is your area bringing to the table? Um, you know, one of the things that has stuck around for actually pretty much ever since we started this was that shaker white. It's, I mean, we yes. had that going out of our garage, right? And it's something that's so simple and clean, but can be tailored to any style, you know? So it's just, you could put a cup pull on it. You could put a modern bar pull on it. You could put bright blue turquoise with it. You could put a, a beigey stone color with it. And it just, it can pull and be, something so different. So I have a lot of clients sometimes that they want to get very bold with the cabinetry and that's okay. But it's just at the end of the day, it's, it's more ideal if, you know, you go a little bit more neutral in the cabinetry yeah. and go bold in other aspects, whether it be, you know, the towels or even backsplash is easier to change yeah. because cabinetry is such a big investment. You want to get it right. And that's kind of why we've done a lot of what we've done. You know, it's the heart of your home people only buy cabinetry one and a half times in their lifetime. So you really want to make sure that you get it right and educating the clients on, on the good and bad of everything since we've been doing this for 15 years is huge. Did you say one and a half? Yes, I know. It's, it's an average. <laughs> <laughs> She's detail oriented, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you want to get those numbers right. <laughs> you know, uh, and that it is a big investment. And I like that you talked about um, going with something that has, that's long lasting, that can longevity kind of with, with everything. Um, and I think that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful advice. It also shows your heart in my, right. In that you want to do what's right and best by that customer. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I love that you, you brought that out and it does go with everything. Is that also, tell me about the name. Yes, simply cabinetry. Does that mean that's all we do? I mean, wh where did that word simply uh, come So from? essentially the biggest reason for the simply is just because it is such an overwhelming process when it comes to cabinetry and there's so many options. So we just really wanted to simplify that. 
Um, but at the end of the day, we do sell some of the counterparts and we do have partners when it comes to the other cabinet counterparts that are involved in the cabinetry space. Um, whether it's the countertops, we sell directly the hardware and accessories. Um, but we really want to make sure that we're the subject matter experts when it comes to cabinetry, because there are so many pieces and parts that you can put into a kitchen. And we really want to make sure that you're making that correct um, move and making that space your heart of your home. So, um, you know, we wanted to basically, we wanted to say what we do and what we do well, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a big undertaking, especially for even contractors and developers to sit there with their client and talk about cabinetry, because it's a, it's a, it's, not an incredibly short process. It, we, we've shortened it as much as we can in order in, in the pieces that we give our clients so they can make that decision quickly and efficiently. But at the end of the day, the contractors and builders, they don't have that information and it can be a drawn out process if you're not giving the clients the right information at the right time to make that efficient decision. Right. So right. making it simplified and um, you know focusing on what we know. So Tracy knows uh, I'm Swiss and, you know, the Swiss are all into efficiencies and effectiveness. Yes. But with that, we have found, I have found simplicity is one of my favorite words. It has mm -hmm. to be simple because if it gets too complex, it's hard to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. um, we become overwhelmed. We yep. procrastinate. So if you've made the process about being simple, now I can make a decision. I can move on uh, with this, whatever right. model or whatever I'm doing. So I I appreciate the way your mind works around this yeah. idea of yeah. simple. Yeah, there's a lot that's gone into, like we've done some showroom refreshes like a franchisee would be and a lot of a lot of hours went into some, you know, brainstorming of how to make it as simple as possible. Because, you know, I, I always tell everybody we have two types of clients usually, whether they're deer in headlights or a kid in a candy shop. So <laughs> it's how do we service this two type of clients and get them to the end goal as efficiently as possible with the right decision. So it's just trying to tailor what works best because again, you know, we have left and right side brain people and it's just how do I, how do they understand this the most efficient way and how do they want to make a decision? So. Yeah, that's great. I never thought of those two as being diametrically opposed, the deer and headlights <laughs> and the kid in the candy store, but I like yeah. it. I get yeah. it. I like it. So yeah. I've, I've got a question for you. So mm -hmm. it seems that more recently, you know, in the past several years, you went back to learn more about franchising, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like you're very, very, um, very much into knowledge, gaining knowledge, and then imparting knowledge on others. Yeah. So can you just talk to that a little bit, maybe some things that prompted you to go back, some things you realized you didn't know, and what you want to share with people yeah. and prospective franchisees? Yeah. So, I mean, when it comes to the cabinetry space, I mean, sometimes my clients, they make me learn because at the end of the day, when they have these questions or this new space, yeah. it's something that I have to dive into the details and figure out. Um, and I feel like it's, it's very similar on the franchise level where, you know, I'm certainly never going to know everything. If we knew everything, you know, why do we wake up in the morning, you know? So, yeah. Um, and, and I want to learn as much as possible in order to service my franchisees and make them as successful as possible. So at the end of the day, you know, we've gone to several of these franchise conventions and, you know, we've been sucking it up like a sponge, um, and trying to learn everything we can and, um, have mentors and, um, get that education process. And I have got my CFE, the certified franchise executive, uh, certificate in order to be able to show people, you know, what I've done and what I'm accomplishing and, and, you know, that in turn helps me make them successful and our franchisees successful. So mm, the power of legitimacy. Mm, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's mm. an excellent. That's an excellent point. It shows um, your commitment. Yes. Yeah. Franchising and to your future franchisees. Mm -hmm. So, Diana, what next? Where Where are you going with simply cabinetry or in your life? Um, yeah. Are you going to become manufacturers? 
Are you going to, you know, take over the world? Are, are you going to become always industry? <laughs> what are we what's next? Where are you going? So it's funny that you ask that because um, we are technically simply brands. Um, so our future is our goal um, would be to have several different types of brands under us other than cabinetry. We just figured we start with the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, yeah, so our goal is to pro our eventually, you know, build this into different types of spaces, whether it be flooring or what have you. But it's it's once you, once we've dissected the most difficult, complex piece of the renovation or home services, we just feel like we can take it and duplicate it from there mm -hmm. and being able to grow into this um, big brand of simplifying, you know, home improvement. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I, I like how you started with the most complex. Yeah, it's right? the only uphill from there. I know. I didn't do it on purpose. But. <laughs> ah, it wasn't a conscious choice. Got it. No, <laughs> but I do so, love the, the, you know, the, the, not the difficulty, but the, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, the, the challenge. The complexity. Yes, the, the challenge. challenge that, you yeah, like the exactly. challenge. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I know I, I lost uh, reception there for a little while. I hope it didn't freeze on a goofy face. But um, <laughs> but I, I don't know if Rebecca asked this already during that time. I don't think so. Have you ever had a challenge that you had to overcome? Like something difficult I don't in business, in life, something where, you know, it, it just forced you to like dig deep and go to the next level with how you maneuver or operate? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, I mean, there's definitely been things that, you know, everybody learns over business, but I yeah. mean, you know, back in the day, you know, we used, we were the ones that were in our showroom and their day to day, um, you know, we started having babies, we had other people, management levels, um, kind of controlling the showrooms, but at the end of the day, until we came back, it didn't become back what it was. And we had to learn that, you know, we need to make sure we set all these standards, set all these details, be there and, and giving them the right tools and the education in order to be able to successfully, um, run this, you know, and, and, um, understanding our passion and conveying that as well and having the right people that have that same passion and that same core values where it are the own it, love it and grow it. You know, you want to own what you're doing and love what you're doing yeah. and also grow everybody else doing it as well. So, yeah, I'd say that's probably one of the biggest things we've learned over the years is just, you know, making sure you have those right people that um, definitely share those same values. That's yeah, the business oracles sense. in, by the way. So <laughs> yeah. we are on the same track in terms of that's that yeah. really is the biggest piece, right? People yeah. on the right bus, on the right seats, kind of kind yeah. of thing. Um, so I love I love how you're thinking that way. So when we go out in the future and we have simply cabinetry, simply floor, simply whatever, that's all kind of together. Um, and you look back, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? What do you want people to be saying about Diana Simmons? How do you want to be leaving the world with some kind of legacy? Um, I mean, really, it's that I helped them build their, you know, future and, you know, their, uh, you know, investment and, mm -hmm. and help them learn and build their confidence in growing themselves. You know, that's, that's kind of what I, I, even with family, you know, I have a lot of family aunts and uncles and, you know, I like, you know, to be there with them. And there's certain people that you feel like in your life that may need what you have. You know, my cousin was actually just telling me the other day that, you know, there's phrases that she says to herself every day, you know, she's in pharmaceutical management, and she says to herself every day. And apparently, I just learned this two weeks ago, that it's one of the phrases that I've said to her. And she like, just, that's her mantra, uh -huh. and she's speaking to her people. And it's just, you know, it, it's, it, it really touched me that I affected somebody like that, you know, and, and, you know, she's, she's using, you know, that whole mentality of growing it and listening and, you know, understanding, you know, the impact. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Crazy question. I don't know why this just popped into my head, but 
<laughs> if you <laughs> if you're going to be reincarnated into some kind of creature or animal here on earth which mm-hmm. one would it be and why hmm that's a good one I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, probably maybe like a bird or something. Just being I able knew to. It. <laughs> I knew, knew it. you were going to say some kind of bird. It? Because she's got this like big vision. She likes to see like the scope of things and then share and that's it. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking that's I could exact- just go. I knew the- it. I knew it. That's oh so goodness. awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. That's awesome. That's, That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. That's great. But you know, it's so interesting because as you when we talked earlier, Diana doesn't just see the vision, she clarifies the, yep. the vision and can execute. Not everybody yep. can do that. Yeah. Right? So definitely big picture, put the pieces together, execute. Yeah, And the freedom, the freedom piece of being the, the bird and being piece, able yeah. to yeah. go here where you need to and go there where you oh, need to to get it all to done. Multitask. My favorite thing is to yeah. like, multitask and be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wild. That's great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, ladies, we're coming on the top of the hour here. Um, thank you, Diana, for sharing your heart and your vision <laughs> uh, for Simply Cabinetry. Um, we're going to be keeping an eye on you to see oh, yes. where things are going. I want big, to big. Yes. Go big, eagle. go home, right? <laughs> an eagle eye. Eagle yeah. eye. Keeping an eagle, eagle. eye. <laughs> <laughs> so, good. you know, one of the big takeaways uh, for me was this not accepting I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about a couple of weaknesses in me. And I have frequently said, I'm not good at that. I don't know how to do that. And I'm like, well, what if I did know? What if I did know? Yeah. How would my life be different? And where can I know? How can I go gathering that? Because there's one area of my life I'm always saying, I just don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I wished I wasn't saying that. Instead saying, well, how do I know? Yeah. You have that control, right? (laughs) Right. Right. So that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, Diana, for being here. Um, and Tracy, I'm going to let you wait. Get wrap up. What, what? What? Well, wait, where can people reach her? People are going to want to reach oh, yeah. Diana. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn. I've been trying to share a lot of my story and the road to our journey going on and franchising. Oh, yeah. um, I'm, you know, it's just under Diana Simmons of, um, of Simply Cabinetry. And then I'm also on Instagram. I've been doing a little bit more on the personal side of my whole story and where we're going, nice. um, which it's funny because my name is Simply Tall Diana. So, <laughs> and then I we also it. have our Facebook and Instagram accounts for Simply Cabinetry. Um, but you could also email me at Diana at simplycabinetry.com. Perfect. Yeah. Your wrap up, Tracy. So, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you're interviewing people on the show. And mm-hmm. Rebecca and I have been interviewing, you know, amazing, wonderful people for the last few years. Mm-hmm. And Diana, when you first got on uh, the show and we were doing, you know, the pre conversation, like it was all about cabinets and it was very, yeah. um, <laughs> right. It was very business. And we're like, no, no, no. We have to peel back the layers of this onion yeah. because there is so much like heart and soul and depth and story. And and we were right. We were right. Yeah. You have so much to offer, like like not only in the way of business, but just in who you are and who you show up as for right. other people. Mm-hmm. Like according to the Zoracle profile, you would definitely be a, a high societal because for <laughs> you, it's all about like giving other people the opportunity to to shine at their highest light and to win big. And yep. I, I just applaud you for who you are and who you show up as. And it's been wonderful having you on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's It's been a pleasure. It was great getting to know you guys too. I really enjoyed it and I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. And thank you to those that are listening in today to the Franchise Woman podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships forged. Make sure to comment, to like, to share Diana Simmons' interview today. And of course, Tracy and I will see you next week on another episode. Bye.